Look, we gotta talk. Beginner's guides for Guardian Tales kind of suck. You know why? Because they rush you to the end game. They prepare you for the meta, and this game is not set up for the meta. I'm Gotcha Jay. This is your home for Gotcha news analysis and reviews. Let's hop right into this. So before we hop into this beginner's guide, we gotta talk about what this beginner's guide is not. And this beginner's guide is not a progressions tip to get you to late game, because you know why? Because everything in this game is so amazing that going from chapter one to the end game, if you just jump there, you're missing out on so much. And I want to prepare you for the different milestones that you're going to face in this game without sacrificing what that end game actually looks like. So when we talk about this here beginner's guide, I'm preparing you for the game. I'm preparing to get you to a place to where you understand the fundamentals. You don't have to worry about the tips and tricks, which we will have a video for, but instead give you a fundamental knowledge of what you need to do when and to know what you need to know when. So tip number one, don't think about the future. OK, when you're first playing out this game, stop worrying about am I playing the meta? Is this unit the best unit I can get? No, in fact, just play with the things the game gives you to like the end of chapter five. Why the end of chapter five? Because that boss at the end of chapter five is the first time in the game, in my opinion, where you truly need to have a competent understanding of team composition, team analysis and play style, because that boss is kind of hard. OK, and it doesn't really matter what you use to get it done. You can do a hundreds of different types of teams. You just have to have a fundamental understanding of the game to get it done. So the game will probably give you anywhere between 15 to 20 champions on its own by the end of that point. So just play, enjoy. You're going to have plenty of really good options because if we're being honest, yes, the three star champions that you can get at their base three, the rarest of the rare, they are better than the base twos in 90% of the situations. But those base twos can actually get you really far. Once you finish chapter five, the game opens up to you completely. You're going to get things like Camazone and Orbital Lift and so many other new experiences that are going to fundamentally change how you perceive the game from a content point of view. There's so much to do and to burn your stamina on. And honestly, before that, you cannot go wrong. You simply can't. Like, seriously, try any hero you want. Just do the first Awakening Stone and the hero skill and give them a go. You will understand fundamentally what that hero plays like and if you like them. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You're losing a very minimal amount of resources and it's better for you to learn than to never learn those things and go on the rest of the game just being a meta slave. It's not worth it. You're going to learn so much about how the game operates. What are the things you are good at? What are the things you're bad at? What are the things you can find advantages in in different situations? Just, just based off a of trial and error. Don't worry about it. Explore. So that brings us straight to number two. Explore. Don't be afraid to get things wrong. There's nothing to get wrong in the game early on. You're going to see plenty of people to tell you to save your awakening stones, to do X, Y, and Z, to hard focus on these types of resources to make sure that you're saving your weapons to do these things. Screw all of that, okay? For, just forget all of that. It's not important. What's important is that you're playing the game, that you're having fun and you're learning. There, The game is not going to give you enough resources before chapter five for you to honestly get anything wrong. The game that gives the portions of the game that gives you the most resources come into effect after chapter five. So the ending of chapter five, you can look at as the big ending of the big you can look at the end of chapter five as the end of the early game. And honestly, that gap between five and the end of chapter seven is kind of all of the same. So mid game doesn't really even start until you can beat the boss in chapter seven. Why? Because that's the next step in terms of difficulty is from chapter five boss to chapter seven boss. There is a little bit of a window there, but once you can clear that hurdle, you're now officially in the mid game. OK, and then once you're in the mid game, that's when you kind of stop exploring. OK, so that brings us to the next part. You can once you get to that part, just focus on something specific. Once you get to chapter seven, once you finish chapter seven and you're into chapter eight, that's when you actually want to start thinking about using your crystals. That's when you want to start thinking about using all of your awakening stones. That's when you can start to make some decisions that may come back to hurt you. Prior to that, all you really need to worry about is that you can try any hero you want. After chapter seven is when you really need to start focusing in on, OK, I want to go down this mono element type of path. And the reason why I say mono element is because it's just easier that way. It, there's nothing wrong with having a rainbow composition of having a water and a fire and a white and a, a dark because you like the way that their passive synergize together. That is what the end of the meta looks like. There is not a mono earth that is dominating the, the end game. There's not mono dark. It is these rainbow compositions. But the reason why they're effective at the end game is because 
everybody has enough resources to make it do so. If you started out at the early game, and or if you once you get around the mid game, if you started to invest all of your resources in all of these different elements, you're going to have a really, really hard time getting them to five stars because of how long it takes to grind out evolution stones. So that is why it's recommended for if you're in the mid game to focus on a singular element that you enjoy playing. It doesn't matter which one it is. It really, really doesn't. Just find some characters that you enjoy to play that are the same element and go down that path. And then while you have the stamina and you're not looking to do anything, just go grind the resource dungeons that give you those Evo stones for your type of element. And then try to get them to five stars and invest your awakening stones into them and make them stronger and go down that path. Honestly, guys, any single mono element team that you come up with, if it is designed to have a proper team composition, which it becomes pretty obvious to you once you're in the mono element class types of, hey, I'm picking four light elements. Which four should I pick for my team? It's kind of hard to get it wrong at that point. I trust that you're smart enough to do that. Once you're there and you're doing those things, you honestly can ride that team out to masters in both arena and coliseum. When it does not really matter. You can get to that point in the game with any viable team composition and past that point is when the meta truly starts to come into play. Yeah, you're going to run into some people that have OP three star units that have spent a ton of money maxing it out, but it doesn't really matter because attrition gets you to master's rank and you don't really need to worry too much about being the end game masters because only 100 people get past masters. A hundred people get past masters and any of you watching this video right now can get to masters with a proper team comp. And what is a proper team comp? It's just simply something that makes sense. OK, it doesn't have to be meta units. It doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to be the best of the best. It just needs to make sense. So point number four is actually a reiteration of point number three in a different way. Don't use your crystals at all until you beat chapter seven. Why do I say that? Well, I already told you that mono element is the way to go for this point, but and also that you're going to get a lot of really good two stars just by playing the game. Those things are true, but the real reason why you want to wait till after chapter seven to do that is because that's going to take you a month to two months, depending on how long you play the game just to do OK to get to chapter seven. And then once you're past that, there's going to be brand new meta units by that point. So why are you going to be investing all of your resources two months before you even get to the competitive part of the game when you should just be saving your gems to the end and then just be buying the new meta units that become released at that point. Once season two came out, we got Future Princess Garam and Beth, all of which are the top end of the best of the best in this game at this moment. There's maybe two or three other units that you would say are comparable to them out of the 50 that are in the game. The game is slowly power creeping in season two, so don't jump on the crystal wagon too, too early, because by the time you're ready to actually invest in those three star heroes, you may realize that you actually need newer ones instead of the ones you have now. Not, uh, needs the wrong word. You may want some of these newer ones instead of the ones you have now. So you don't have to listen to this advice, but for a beginner, it is probably the best advice to just explore, to enjoy what's around you and to not focus on these banner units until you get after chapter seven, when you're really making more decisions about your team and the direction you want to go. And now that you have beaten chapter seven and you're in eight, welcome to the mid game. OK, the reason why I'm saying this is the mid game and all of this comes into the place is because chapter eight is a new wall. Chapter nine is a new wall. Chapter 10 is a new wall. And then you have all of these dungeons that bring their own walls from chapter seven forward. It's a matter of getting your teams in a place to where you can you can progress through statistically harder dungeons. They slowly begin to stat stick you in those moments. They are incredibly fun. There's a lot of really, really fun puzzles and humor that's been brought there. So it's worth doing. It's not just the traditional gotcha where they just stat tick you for money. No, it's worth actually doing to explore and enjoy that content. But that's the mid game of you slowly grinding out these resources. And then end game at the end is you you don't have any more content to enjoy. And it is purely getting more and more units to a point where you can use them in arena and you can use them in Coliseum. You can adapt to the new metas. That's the end game. OK, don't worry about it. Like I mentioned earlier, if you are in that mid game for the entirety of your future career in Guardian Tales, that's a healthy place to be. Honestly, that's where a ton of fun happens. Don't hyper focus on being the end game, because like I said, only 100 people actually get to beat past masters. OK, it's it's not really worth thinking about. You can get there with any good team comp. 
Don't worry about it. Enjoy the process. Have fun. If you are looking for more tips and tricks on how to do that the most efficiently, if you want to know some of those higher things because you are thinking you want to compete the later in the game, we have tips and tricks for that. You can check out the video here and we will and I will give you that information that you're seeking. But please have fun.